All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to another session of BoatingTechTalk.com. Uh, we've got a question from a fellow boater. All right, let me read this out. Uh, Mike asks, Jeff, should the electronics on my upper and lower helm be on the same circuit, fuse, or switch? We'll talk about that. Does it make sense to separate them for redundancy, Mike? Oh, that's a good question, Mike. I can see why some of us would put one circuit breaker, right? It's tempting, isn't it? I mean, I can see it. One circuit breaker that does everything. But then the problem is, what if that circuit breaker trips? Maybe a bunch, maybe there is a sounder that's giving you a problem and it's tripping the breaker and now you lose everything. And he's right. Mike brings a good point. There is an argument here about redundancy. And certainly on some boats, not all boats, but some boaters are going to want to have the upper and the lower helm actually be on separate breakers. The challenge with that is that sometimes, and depending on the manufacturer of equipment that you have, you want to have, how should I say this? When electronics turn on after the circuit breaker as was energized, what's going to happen is they're going to be looking for certain devices on your network. So for instance, if you turn on the upper helm electronics, the upper helm electronics is going to remember that last time it was booted up, it was seeing a lower helm electronics. And so that's maybe sometimes some of the issues with having different breakers. But what I end up doing in those situations, and I've done the same thing on my boat because I don't have two helms, but I certainly have a lot of electronics. What I do is I basically turn them all on at the same time. So by the time they all wake up, they're all pretty much online in the sense that they're sensing each other on the ethernet ports. And this is relatively important for maybe sounders, radars, not transducers, but sounder boxes which are connected to ethernet and or uh, a radar. So what I would suggest as a starting point, I think all of us that have two helms should certainly consider having multiple breakers for your navigation. And the reason is, and it's true, is that you could find yourself in a situation where that one single breaker or one item on that breaker trips and then you lose everything. So it's pretty common to have autopilot on its own breaker, radar often on its own breaker, right? Those two big loads. And then you're probably maybe going to have a VHF, an AIS transponder on another breaker. And then maybe you're going to have instruments on this own breaker. And you might have then a chart plotter upper and lower. Now that's a lot of breakers and not all of us have space for that. So I'm not telling you, you've got to do it. But if you've got spare breakers or in the past, your boat was set up with, you know, two, three, four, five breakers for your electronics, for your nav, then I certainly wouldn't collapse those breakers unless you really, really, really need them for something else. So I think it's a good idea to have more breakers so that you can turn on and isolate certain components of your navigation system. So that would be one thing. Mike didn't talk about this uh, because he's talking about upper and lower helm, but something that we do often, and I certainly did on my own boat, is this concept of having an instrument breaker separate from your chart plotters. And this is useful when you're an anchor. Sometimes you want to have, you know, maybe depth and wind, but you really don't need to see your GPS and you certainly can't afford to have your chart plotter run all night. So on my own boat, and we've done this on a lot of boaters, we'll install the instruments, right? So that could be a wind vane, maybe a simple transducer that's connected to an instrument packed, right? Uh, sometimes it could be a Furuno RD30, right? To me, instruments are what maybe navigation systems were 20 years ago for many of us. That would be basically depth sounder, uh, maybe GPS, maybe wind information, water temp, not that that's critical, but that's generally going to come with a transducer. And then you could literally have one breaker that you're okay with leaving on when you're at anchor, sometimes when it's a little sketchy, because not all the anchorages are always calm, right? The wind comes up, you never know. So I have certainly an instrument breaker and I'm a big fan of an instrument breaker. And if I had two helms, uh, or if you're a boater that has two helms, then certainly doing an upper and lower makes sense. But you can even go further. Like I said, think about the radar. It's not crazy. Radar is a good one. And having a VHF AIS breaker makes a lot of sense as well. So yeah, I think Mike's going on the right direction. Um, I would certainly have different breakers if I can. not If I can't, well then, you know, and that happens to a lot of us. Then know where your fuse block is, right? Because you're going to have one breaker that turns on or energizes a whole fuse block. And that fuse block is going to have maybe five, six, seven different circuits. And no, so if every one of them gives you grief, you know how to isolate one item on that single breaker. And that's how I would go about uh, installing the power 
to a navigation system on a dual helm boat. So great question from Mike. If you've got further questions or comments, please uh, put them down below and we'll make sure to read them. And, you know, sharing is caring. So thanks everyone for tuning in. If you're curious, we've written whole articles about this. Go on our website, search it out. Uh, and we've got a lot of other uh, tech talks about this very topic. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Um, it actually, it really does make a difference. It encourages us to keep posting. So if you're watching this video and haven't had a chance to subscribe, we really do care because the more of you that are watching, the more of us over here are willing to put, spend more time in creating content. So thanks again.